That night, I wasn't met the way I thought I would be. There was silence in the house, and neither my wife Helen nor my kids could be seen. Mike Lewis and I have been married for eleven years. I looked around and saw that the house was quiet. There was a note on the table. Sorry, Mike. I'm too scared to face you, so I can't tell you this in person. I fell in love with someone else. The kids are safe with me. The papers for the divorce are in the envelope next to this note. She said, you can see I'm not asking for anything. I don't need to say that my day and life quickly became useless. I was swearing and stumbling around the kitchen while reading the divorce papers. Eventually, I gave up and fell into a chair. Helen was leaving me the house and all of our money. She was only taking clothes and toys for herself and the kids. The last thing that made me mad was when Helen asked me to sign papers for my kids so that her new boyfriend could adopt them. It felt like it was going to happen. At least I knew Helen had left me for Henry Carslake from the news. I called my ex-wife. Hey, Mike, screw you, she said back. Hey, Mike. What the heck is going on? I inquired. Helen, like I said in my note, I met someone else and fell in love with him. Yes, you did, of course. No one just breaks up with their partner and sleeps with another guy. It tells me that you two slept together, at least. I hope it wasn't in our bed. Helen responded, no, please stop swearing and be polite. So civilized. Put an end to being polite. You can split up and stay with your ex, but I'm not giving my kids up for adoption. Tell Mr. Big, underscore, to go to hell. The call ended. I went out to eat after taking a shower and changing. In my mood, I didn't want to cook. I went to the bar and had a few drinks after the food, which was fine. Since today had been so bad, I thought I deserved that much. The boss of Carslake Construction Company was the man my wife left me for. I had worked for his company before, but that was about to change. Paul, my friend, saw me at the bar. Mike, I don't see you around here very often. Were you able to spend the night away from your family? That sort of thing, Paul. With a stack of divorce papers in my hands, I went back to an empty house. Helen is getting a divorce from you. That was a surprise. Neither do I, Paul. Not me either. She has now moved in with Henry Carslake. What, you mean Henry Carslake of Carslake Construction? That's the one, yes. I believe she loves him. What are you going to do, Mike? It's time for us to split up. I'll sign the papers and get rid of her because she doesn't want anything from me. I already threw away the other form she wants me to sign. What was the form? Paul inquired. She wants me to give him the kids to adopt. In this life, that won't happen. Paul was angry and shook his head. I know for sure that Carslake can kiss my behind. It was planned that I would start working for him on Monday. Underscore underscore, him. I'm going to get another job. I signed the divorce papers, but I forgot to throw away the form for my kids to be adopted by a underscore underscore. She begged me, but I wouldn't give in. In the end, she gave up. Chloe was 10 years old and Lee was 8 years old when the split happened. Carslake made me angry, but I didn't want to go to jail for it. On Monday, I didn't show up for work. It's weird that no one was hounding me to do it. Some of my payback on Carslake happened without me having to do anything. Because I talked to Paul about it, it happened. Most of the area contractors said they wouldn't work with Carslake Construction after word got out. They saw that he had lied to me and refused to work with him as a way of repaying me. Old Henry did find other workers, but they were bad guys, and the work was sloppy. Several times, someone asked me to give them a price on the work. But when I learned it was for Carslake, I didn't even send one. That was the end of my split after six months. 
she got married to underscore underscore three months after that. While they were on their vacation, I watched the kids for a week. To help them, I didn't take the kids. I thought a week would be better than the Saturdays I was getting. The question my daughter Chloe asked made me mad. Daddy, why did you send us to live with mom and Henry? What? I did not send you. Your mom took you because she no longer loves me. You could have stayed here if it were up to me, I told Chloe, reassuring her that it wasn't my choice. I was going to tell Helen about that. Helen walked in all tanned and happy when she rang the doorbell to pick up the kids. Hella, stop lying. You must tell the kids the truth from now on, or I will do it for you. They now understand that I did not ask you to take them in. Tomorrow, I would fight you for custody if I could. She got angry and walked away. After being married for a long time, life as a single man seemed strange to me. Some of my friends tried to set me up on dates, but I really didn't want to go out with anyone. I missed love but didn't want to date, and I had no idea that my life was about to change again. Gary and Emily lived next door. They moved in right after Helen left me. They got a good deal on their house because it needed a lot of work. Gary had just retired from the army, and Emily was a secretary. They seemed like a nice couple, and we got along well. They talked with me when we saw each other. It was terrible when Gary passed out at work. In ten minutes, paramedics and a doctor got there. The police said Gary was dead at the spot. There was a hematoma in Gary's brain, which was found during the exam. Emily was upset and by herself. I told her I felt sorry for her. Both of Gary's parents had died, and Emily's folks were in Europe on spring break. I didn't want to leave her alone, so I took her to my house and made us both a drink. I watched Emily cry and heard her talk about her hopes for the future. Emily's tears made her fall asleep on my couch. I put a blanket over her and slept in the chair in case Emily woke up in the middle of the night. The next morning, Emily was going at the same time that Helen dropped off the kids. Good to see you're not wasting any time, Mike. Hella, come on. That poor woman just lost her husband, I told her. She looked at me and then went to talk to the kids. I told them later that day why Emily was leaving the house. Lee didn't get it right and Chloe looked sad. M asked me to go to Gary's funeral, and I did. All debts in the UK have to be insured, so Emily won't be left without money. Since she had just lost her husband, this wasn't much comfort. Emily's parents came back from Europe and talked to me both after the service. I told them I would take care of Emily. Besides people I worked with, I was her only friend. I told Emily I would do any small job she needed help with as much as I could. It wasn't anything major, just small things that kept the house habitable. When Helen dropped off the kids again, she stayed in the car. I didn't mind because it meant I didn't have to talk to her. Emily and I were together for a while. Instead of a couple, they helped each other out like friends. After almost a year, Lee was playing in the yard while I cleaned up my work van. Someone was talking to Emily when I turned around because I could hear them. I told him to stop being a bother, but I heard Emily say it was okay because she was going to hang the laundry out to dry on the lines. Emily, would you like to have dinner with us tonight? Lee inquired. You can't just invite people over for dinner, I stated. Lee answered, it's not people, it's Emily. We both laughed as we stood there. Emily said she was free to come along. That sounds good to me. That's great. She said, thank you. Lee left to tell Chloe that we had a guest over for dinner. I told him I was sorry for being so careless. It was clear that Emily was pretty good in the kitchen because she helped me make dinner. She sat with us for a while before going home and helped me clean up after dinner. Mike, thanks for dinner. I had a great time. Thanks for accepting the invitation, I told him. Emily and I said our goodbyes and watched her walk to her house. 
It was when I heard her door lock that I went back inside. Chloe smiled and asked, Dad, she's so cute. I told her, no, Emily is just a friend and neighbor. But I liked the idea of her being my girlfriend. I didn't tell the kids about the thought. She picked up the kids on Sunday afternoon. I was sure they would tell her that Emily was coming to dinner with us, and I was right. When Helen picked up the kids again, she really paid attention and asked about Emily. That's none of your business, Emily's just a friend. You left me for a while, so why are you worrying about me? Don't worry, Mike. It's just a question. Yeah, well, you got what you wanted. You have nothing to do with what I do. I didn't get all the things I wanted. You didn't, she said. Don't bother asking if I'll let a jerk adopt kids. You should get used to the fact that it's not going to happen. I was just thinking. Helen didn't mean to, she said. You left me to live a fancy life with him. Let him have his own kids if he wants them. That man broke up my marriage by taking my wife. He can't adopt those kids. Helen sulked and went home on foot. I smiled even though I knew I made her mad. In the following year, I hadn't seen Emily in a few weeks, in part because I was very busy. Paul, my friend, was rewiring a house for a young couple and asked me to make an offer on a full rewiring of the plumbing. They took my offer, and I was very busy for a few weeks getting everything done. Paul kept me up to date on news while we worked on the house. Carslake still had to hire a lot of workers from outside the area. Still, most of the neighborhood guys didn't want to work for him. Now that the housework was done, I could finally take it easy. I chose to have dinner with Emily. We agreed on a time for Saturday night and she said yes. It took my breath away when I walked in behind Emily. It was a short woman with what I called a pixie cut haircut. The dress she wore made her slim body stand out, and that's when I became physically interested in her for the first time. Dinner was great, and we talked about our everyday lives for a long time. Late that night, I went with Emily to her door. Thank you for a great evening, Mike, I smiled. But Emily stood on her toes and kissed me before I could say anything. Not a nice peck, but a full kiss with the mouth open and the tongue and cheeks touching. I tried to catch my breath and said, wow, I didn't expect that. Emily smiled, said goodnight and kissed me on the face. Take me with you again and see where it takes you, she said. Emily and I went to my bed the second time I asked her to go on a date. She might not have been very tall, but my god, she was hot. I don't believe I've ever had such great sex. Emily and I hung out more and more, and in the end, she sold her house and moved in with me. The kids thought it was cool that I was dating, and I knew they would tell Helen everything. Chloe said that her mother wasn't happy with what she said. She really didn't want me, but Emily did. We got married a year after the first time we slept together. Helen laughed and turned away when the kids told her. We had two kids together. The boy was named Gary, and the little brother was named Robert. When they came to visit, my two older kids were old enough to travel on their own, so I didn't see Helen as much. After many years, Chloe told me one night that she was going to marry someone else. Josh, her boyfriend, asked her to marry him the night before. In my role as her dad, I asked if they needed any help paying for the wedding. We didn't think we would need it, but now we do, said Chloe. Chloe told me, Henry said he would pay for the wedding. I looked a little confused. After we talked about everything with him and my mom, he told us the news. With the caveat that he would walk me down the aisle, Henry agreed to pay for the wedding. Henry said, I said no way, that's your job, and he refused to help pay for it. Chloe looked like she was upset. I was mad at Carslake for acting that way. She asked to talk to me alone, so I let her. We went outside into the yard. Mike, we have the rest of the money from selling my house in the bank. Please pay for your costs with it. It's what Chloe gets. 
Yes, Emily, but it's your money. You don't have to spend it on Chloe. That's right. Tell that poor girl that we'll pay for it now. When I told Chloe the news, she jumped for joy. We made a deal on a price range, and everything they wanted cost less than that. The next day, Chloe called me to say that Henry was very angry and that Helen was also not happy. We were sitting in the yard one afternoon when Lee showed up out of the blue. He told them he had to go because he was sick of hearing his mom and Henry fight. Are they still arguing about the wedding? She asked Emily. No, it's not that. There's no way I can tell that Henry is doing his bedroom chores, I laughed out loud. I was glad Helen broke up with me for someone who can't do what he's supposed to do when it counts. Dad, the house's walls are so thin they're like paper. At night, I can hear them. Mom must be sick of Henry not sleeping well in bed. As we drank beer, we laughed about what happened. Lee stayed the night with us so that there wouldn't be a fight at home. She wasn't happy on the day of Chloe and Josh's wedding. Chloe told her that Henry and she would sit behind Emily and me. Nothing went wrong with the church service. I agreed to let Helen sit at the head table at the party. But Henry sat with Emily, Robert, Gary, and Lee. After everyone had spoken, the chefs moved a few tables out of the way so there would be room for dancing. Josh and Chloe were the first ones to dance. Ellen and Henry, Emily and I, and they all joined them. In the late evening, Gary and Robert were sitting at the bar with one of Chloe's girls and her kids. Emily said yes when Lee asked her to dance. With a smile, I told her, go for it. Helen stopped what she was doing and walked over to me. I could tell Helen had been drinking, and I knew this was not going to end well. Look at both of them. Even though she has two boys, she looks young enough to be Lee's girlfriend. Emily looked the same as the first time we met. She had not aged well, though, and had put on weight. The back of her dress was too low, showing off a lot of fat. Henry gained weight and his hair fell out. They were meant to be together. Helen, don't even start with me. You don't need to be jealous. Also, we're no longer married, so you have no right to talk about my life. Have envy want to be like her. Oh my, it looks like she still has school to go to. I think she'll be okay when she's big and has a really nice bust. Don't talk about my wife like that. For your information, Emily is more of a woman than you ever were. Helen was shocked as she looked at me. Ask yourself, Helen, when was the last time you had good sex? I took a moment to think. Last night I had great sex, and you know what? Tonight I might have more. She was shocked when Henry joined us. I see, Helen. When you left me, you thought you were getting something better in exchange. It's possible that I wasn't. For me, I just moved on. That was my old life. Now I have my own, with a wife who loves me for who I am and two more wonderful children. Right now my life is the best it can be. Do you agree? They were playing goldfish when I left. Lee joined Emily and me on the dance floor by being pulled there by one of the girls. What was that at the bar? Emily said in a low voice as we danced. Smile at me. Soon, I'll tell you. While we kissed, Helen was there to see. She smiled at me when we broke up the kiss. She turned around and asked for another drink. Yes, I had moved on for sure. When I compare what I had to what I have now, I feel like I've also gained more value. 